trading the yearly lows. I just missed them. Damn. 10 points in there. Yeah, you mean the S&P's up two. Yeah. Trading the yearly lows. Let's see what we're going. Let's Dow's see where actually down 57. I know. I don't know what's down in the Dow. Well, Apple's been soft all day. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look here and say trading the yearly lows. What do we got? So at Tasty, we generally don't make assumptions around price reversion. Caterpillar's down 14 in the Dow. That's the big mover from earnings. Ooh, McDonald's Caterpillar. down six. Which one? And McDonald's down six. Both had earnings. Why is McDonald's down so much? Oh, earnings? Yes, earnings yeah. from McDonald's. I don't have a position on in there. I took off my Spotify. I took off my UPS. I took off my uh, GM. And I closed out my Pfizer. Those were all... Those were every earnings trade that we had on. Got it. And um, that's it. So at Tasty, we generally don't make assumptions around price reversion. We, you know, reversion to the means not we're not big on that with respect to price. But what about following a significant sell-off? Today we're going to look deeper into we're going to look at 52-week lows and determine if it can be used as a trading indicator. Do you think 52-week lows can be used as a trading indicator? You got to give me some context around it, like like a month later, a week later, a year later. I mean, as a, I mean, just because a stock makes a low, does that mean it's going to go higher within the next, you know, two weeks? No. Let's it's, go to the next slide. Maybe we can answer this question for you. Down moves that set a new 52-week low, that set new 52-week lows, tend to be clustered together, and they often accumulate during large sell-offs. Okay, that makes sense. You go down, you know, we we, we, we don't stay. just go down. We don't make a V bottom. I mean, which yeah. we have had in the past, yeah. but yeah. This can be seen clearly in the price of the SPY from 2000 to 2023. We've seen lots of sell-offs where, you know, when we start making new lows, as we highlighted here in red, you can see they make lower lows. They keep going down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then they turn around and go back up. But but whatever. As soon as we make a new low, there's plenty of new lows that come afterwards. Right. 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 That's so, the continual dots, especially looking at oh wait there. Sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's let's keep going. Next slide, please. So the majority of down moves that set a new 52-week low occurred during the burst of the dot-com bubble. The 2008 recession, the flash crash in 2018, the 2020 COVID sell-off, and the 22, uh, the 2022 recession. So you can see those are the kind of like the five um, where we can highlight, circle, do whatever, sure, and sure. and talk about the majority of the continual down moves. Let's go to the next slide. So in fact, if a down move set a new 52-week low then there was a 74% chance that that low would be exceeded again within the next seven days. So like what happens when options were traded on days where the downturn in the underlying set a new 52-week low? I don't, I don't know. You're going to 08. It didn't perform well at all. I mean, you know, if you go into 2012 or something, then it probably worked out well. Let's take a look at the next slide. We did a study from 2006 to 2021. We looked at short 45 days to expiration, 16 Delta Stranglers, managed 21 days like we always do. We compared the average P&L, the POP, and the conditional value at risk. We looked at doing these trades. Okay, now when you make a new 52 week low, you're probably gonna have implied volatility very close to a high, right? Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of making new lows. Sure, sure. Um, and so um, we looked at contracts open when the down move set a new 52-week low and contracts open when the SPY's SVR, I'm sorry, IVR, had to be over 30. In most cases, it was easy then because it was sure. way over that. Sure. Okay? Seems so hot, hard when you're looking at under 20 now, but yeah. yes. So compared to trading short SPY strangles when the underlying price set a 52-week no low, Trading mechanically when IVR was over 30 resulted in a higher average PL, higher pop, and less tail risk. So the first slide we pop up here is when we opened on a new 52-week low date, um, that was the only criteria, okay? 
the PL was nothing great, minus eight dollars. When we opened when the IBR was over thirty in that same period, we made money. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean not crazy. I mean it makes sense with the implied volatility being. Yeah, well IBR. remember the argument here. The argument here is is, you know, like if you sell at the height of the down well, not necessarily the height of because you don't know what the height is, but if you sell at a new fifty two week low, every time there's making a new fifty two week low, which is better? Like doing that or doing it just when the IBR is over 30. And what we found is that the conditional value of risk, the pop, and the average PL were all lower when you opened a new 52 week low date as opposed to when you opened when the IBR was just over 30. Right. $27, 74%, and 947. Those are all better numbers than anything else we looked at. And it all goes back down to high implied volatility, right? This is because it's very rare for the price of an underlying to reach a new 52-week low. This happened only about 1% of the time. And in comparison, the SPY's IVR was over 30, around 33% of the time in the study. Because the majority of high implied volatility occurrences are left out, 52-week low alone is not a suitable short premium indicator. However, due to the clustering of large down moves, 52-week lows can be used to identify interesting um, underlyings that may be in the midst of a sell-off. Okay, those are all really cool takeaways. Um, I did not know that 52-week lows happen less than 1% of the time. <laughs> I didn't know that. But we did know that the IVR over 30 is about 33% of the time. Those mm -hmm. are both kind of pretty standard tasty So you have stats. a lot more opportunity with implied volatility, yeah. too. Yep. Let's go to the next slide. So it's very rare for an asset's price to reach its 52-week low. But when it does, it's highly likely for that low to be exceeded again shortly thereafter. And because of this clustering, 52-week lows can be used to identify interesting underlines that may be selling off, but are generally not suitable for just for for a 52-week low alone being a short premium indicator when used just by itself. Hey, we're making a new low. Let's just sell everything. <laughs> that that doesn't necessarily work. You need, you need the high IVR. Very good, sir. Let's take a quick 90-second break and come back. we got more Tasty Live coming up next with, oh, joy, Mr. Scott Sheridan next. Tasty Works World Headquarters. You mean yes? Yeah, I just sold some. Give myself some.